Fantasy Authors Handbook on YouTube here again. It's Phil. That's me. Today let's talk about what do we do with all of this writing advice. Look, we all know, and I'm part of it, right, that there's a lot of writing advice out there. It's coming at us from everywhere. From YouTube, for sure. From the blogosphere. From all over social media. Different websites, programs, things you can sign up for all over the various and sundry course, you know, online course hosting sites, all over the place. What do we do with all this writing advice? Because I can see, wow, can I see how overwhelming this can be for someone, especially just kind of starting out on this journey as an author, just kind of testing the waters. Can I do this? How do I do this? I've gotten some weird feedback. I don't know that I know what I'm doing. How, help somebody help me. Somebody help me. And then the giant barrage of stuff happens. Often conflicting advice. Who do we trust? Right? Who is the knowledgeable source? Kind of everybody. And then also there's this feeling, because it's true, that a lot of the writing advice is exactly the same that you're hearing from not just me, but from a lot of people just like me. Show, don't tell, right? Active is better than passive voice. One scene, one POV, etc. And then, of course, there's the crazy advice, right? Like the prologue thing I don't even want to talk about. Prologues are fine, and we'll leave it at that. Other things about the business side of it, almost all of which is just crazy, not good advice. But then some of it is good advice, but then how do you know? What do you know? You know, I mean, is there some way to parse this out? How do I put all of this advice into some kind of usable context? Let's talk about that today, right? There's no step-by-step -step process to this. No one person, I don't care who they are, I don't care what service they are, they are supposedly offering, can be your one-stop. This guru yeah, will exactly tell me exactly how to do this in a step-by-step -step basis. There is no step-by-step -step to this. Even when we're forced to do that by our publishers, the Guide to Writing Fantasy and Science Fiction by yours truly, in which they decided this was going to be six steps to writing uh, and publishing your bestseller. And, and you know what happened, actually? And, and what I had to do to make that happen was change the chapter titles from chapter one to step one. And thanks to my editor, the late, great Peter Archer, I got a line snuck in there that says, this isn't a step-by-step -step process. Even if it says so right on the cover, it's not a step-by-step -step process. You're going to go back and forth between these six steps, these six chapters, over and over again in lots of different orders, however you need to get through this, right? However this is useful to you, use it however you will, <laughs> you know, however you need to. So I hate step-by-step -step advice applied to any creative endeavor. But let's try it. <laughs> Why not? We're here. We're talking about this giant universe, this nebula of writing advice. Let's take it step by step. So I've created a step by step, a seven step plan for dealing with writing advice. Here we go. Step one. This is creative writing. This is art. There is no one way to make art and there is no best way to make art. Step two.
calm down. Just take a deep breath. <clears throat> Still that beating heart and calm down. It's okay. Because look, here's what we're doing. We're writing stories. We're talking about fiction here, right? Creative writing. Nobody dies at the end of this. You know, we're, we're, we're writers. We're not surgeons. We can make mistakes. And we will. In fact, I, I encourage everybody to make all the mistakes they can. Nobody dies at the end of this. A couple of fictional characters, sure. Right? No real people. You're going to be okay. You're not going to get sued. You're not going to lose your writing license because, you know what, there is no writing license. You know how you become a writer? Just start writing stuff. <laughs> you know? Calm down. This isn't a sort of thing where, well, I started writing my first novel and I really don't know what I'm doing, but by the end of this, I'm either, you know, the next, insert name of your favorite, ridiculously successful franchise author here, or it's all been a giant waste of time. That's the kind of thing you want to just kind of let out of you. Calm down. Stay out of the fray. If there's something going on out there in social media that feels anything like even a little bit of a flame war, just walk away. Don't participate in that. Don't get caught up in that. It's going to be okay. That's the main thing, right? You don't have to do all of the things that they're telling you to do. You don't have to remember all the things they want you to remember. You don't have to, ooh, right? Just remain, become calm, calm yourself, and remain calm through the entire process. We're going to be okay. I promise you. Okay? Step three. Start with the most often repeated advice out there. So like I said, everybody kind of says don't show, don't tell. Everybody says, you know, active, not passive. Everybody warns you about words like very or was or that was, stuff like that. Listen to that advice. It's it, People like me are giving that advice over and over again because it generally works. Right? I saw a video on YouTube that said that was called Show Don't Tell is a Lie. Which of course, you know, the clickbait title starts to work on me right away because I have not been lying to people for all these years saying show don't tell. So let's see though, right? Have I am I missing something? Has something new come up? New stuff comes up. So I watched the video, and despite one, there were three authors talking with each other on a kind of Zoom kind of setup. And despite one, there was one moment where one of the authors kind of went somewhere that even the other two were sort of like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Mostly what this video was, was clarifying what we mean by show, don't tell. And basically was exactly the advice that I've been giving all along. So even sometimes when it seems like conflicting advice or there's, you know, this, there's a war between show and tell, there isn't. It's not. Somebody is either using that as a clickbait title, which is fine, I guess, right? Why not? Um, or is just kind of trying to come at it in a different way, which, is, which I, I found the video to be really interesting and useful. Right. Even though it said that I've been lying to everybody the whole time and I haven't been lying because I've been saying the same thing. So find the most, start with, the, that kind of advice that everybody seems to be repeating over and over and over again. In, I hope, right, slightly, at least slightly different ways. And look for text examples. Text examples. Why text examples? Look, we're writing, right? Seeing it written down actually really helps and videos can only go so far other things that's why i will not quit the blog every tuesday because seeing it written down where does the period go where do the quotation marks go where do the commas go why is there an m dash here 
what if I moved this around and changed this configuration of words and, and put the dialogue attribution in the, you know, in the middle instead of at the end? And it gives you a chance to see what that actually looks like in a book form, right? Or in printed form and text form. And all of these things behind me, which are books, game stuff, RPG stuff, there are books everywhere. If you are writing fiction, every work of fiction is a classroom for you. I know I've said this before. I'm going to say it over and over again. Speaking of often repeating writing advice, always be reading. If you're writing, you have to be reading. And every book that you read, what is your favorite novel of all time? That will teach you more about writing a novel than I will. Or anybody else on YouTube. Study that. See what it looks like on the page. Compare what you're reading to what you're hearing in, in videos like this and, and blogs and books and other things about writing. Right? Start with, we can call it the basic stuff like Show, Don't Tell. Right? Some basic stuff about point of view and things like that. Start there with text examples and then get to step four. And this is really where it starts to get important. Pay attention now, y'all. <laughs> Step four. Try stuff. Try it. If there's anything like an exercise in one of these, wherever it is, a book on writing or a video on writing, etc., try the exercise. How long is that going to take? Like half an hour or whatever, maybe? Try it. See what happens. When somebody says, hey, look for the word very, and instead of, you know, very big, try to find a word that means very big, right? It was a huge door instead of it was a very big door. You see that writing advice all the time. That's an easy one. I, I'm i looking at that word very, words like very, that, was, that was, and so on. Those are easy that once you, your brain gets kind of attuned to that, you start to go like, yeah, you know what? That's a little clunky. Step five. Get some specific feedback from the most knowledgeable source you can. Who is that? Can you afford to hire an editor like me or somebody else who can do sort of a manuscript review at least? Uh, can you do that? Can you afford to do that? Do that if you can. Are you part of a writing group that you're sharing your work with? Listen to those. Uh, fellow authors that you you have now made friends with in real life or online. Talk to each other about writing advice. Hey, everybody's saying prologues are bad. What about that? They're not, right? But find somebody who can get, who can read your actual work. Not just say, yeah, I agree with this and I don't agree with that. Look at what's actually on the page. You've got a page of text actually read that right a beta reader a friend a teacher the best editors are actually good teachers that's what an editor really is so get as much specific advice as you can from the best possible sources And again, this is advice not in general, but advice on the actual work, on something you have actually written. A short story, the first chapter of your novel, the first page, the first scene, whatever it is that you feel like, I don't even know if this makes sense to somebody else other than me. Which, by the way, is a, is a malady that affects as many as nine out of every nine authors. So get some, get some input, get some specific input and advice, right? Which then gets you to step six, which is try some more stuff. Based on that input you're getting, you're going to hear like, ah, you need to work on this. Now go get some advice on that. Try more stuff. Hey, this kind of feels weird to me. It doesn't really seem to be working. I don't know. Okay, right? Try something else. Try it in a slightly different way. Take the same advice, 
flip it around a little bit. Say, well, uh, especially things like process advice. These are the things like, I tried Hemingway's writing routine for a week and this is what happened. You see those videos on YouTube a lot. Do you want to try that? Does that seem like maybe? Is that what you're struggling with a little bit? The the process stuff? Like it's writing at the right time of day or getting the right number of words down, etc. Is that what you're struggling with? Well, try that. Try what Hemingway did. Try what Toni Morrison did. Try what whoever did. And maybe that'll help you. Maybe you'll just be like, uh, there's no way in hell that my brain is going to come up with anything creative and interesting at 4 a.m. You know? And if that worked for whoever, fantastic for whoever. You need to find something that works for you. And the way you do that is by trying stuff. So if you're out there going, ah, I don't get enough writing done. I've written like a thousand words in the last two years. Well, then that's not a lot. That's not enough. So try, what can you try? When, where can you find that time? Where do you find that energy, that impulse to write, that habit of writing and so on, right? Try and then try again. Step seven, repeat the last three steps over and over and over and over again for the rest of your life. Because that's what this is, everybody. This is a lifetime pursuit. For some people, it is a hobby, and that's great. I have hobbies, you know, all over the place. It's, it, not everything has to be a side hustle. Not everything has to be a brand. Not everything has to be a startup, <laughs> right? Maybe just do this because you love doing it. In fact, that's really the reason you should be doing it no matter what. But do this over and over and over again. Seek out advice. Try stuff. Seek out and listen to good, knowledgeable feedback. Try some more stuff. Keep writing. Because listen, this is the big secret. Is this the big secret? I don't know. We are all making this up as we go along. Let me say that again. We're all making this up as we go along. So a lot of this writing advice is, yeah, this has been working for people. And you will see it work here and you'll see it work there. But we're all making it up as we go along. And every part of it is evolving. The nature of what a novel looks and sounds like has been evolving all along and continues to evolve. I can tell you for sure that the fantasy genre itself has changed dramatically since I started working on it really full-time in 1995. The audience has changed, the books are different, the approach to it is different, and it's not because, oh no, the girls came and destroyed everything. Come on. Fiction moves with the culture. You know, we move, we evolve, we change, we grow, we try stuff that doesn't work. We try something else that works a little bit better. Somebody comes along and blasts the whole thing to the next level. And then there's a little bit of catch up and then it turns into something completely different because someone else has come in from another direction. This is what's great about it. You're not perfecting this. And whatever, if somebody anywhere ever says, I can tell you right now exactly how to write the perfect novel, that person is nuts. At the very best, that person is simply incorrect. That person, At the worst, that person is trying to sell you some nonsense thing. Because that's a nonsense thing. Art cannot be perfected. There is no best. We live in the subjective. We live only and always in the subjective. And that's what makes it hard sometimes because you can't just choose one from column A and one from column B like your chat GPT. You're not. I'm not. Nobody else is. We're humans. We're artists. 
even if yeah even if we're writing romanticy or cozy whatever the thing we're artists this is art we're making it up as we go along so now we're calm right we're listening to advice out there and we're trying stuff to see what works not for everyone all the time but what works for us as individuals what does, what works for you is not going to work for me it's not going to work for that other person it's not going to work for the other person over there whatever it is process stuff show don't tell da, 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 all of it there is no just hard and fast set of rules that you actually have to do this and you have to do that there are rules of grammar and usage, punctuation, things like that, that allow you to write in a way that people can read and make sense of it. And if you're if you really are more story focused than you are kind of an avant garde, you know, explorer of the edges, if you are Clarice Lispector or William S. Burroughs, right? All that stuff is all bets are off. Do whatever you want. But if you are trying to, you know, kind of get that bigger audience or just tell a story and it's about the story and it's about your characters and it's not about fiddling with expectations, then you learn the craft stuff. That's easy. Anybody can learn that. You can certainly come to people like me, right, and other copy editors who will just take your raw manuscript and make all of those rules of grammar and usage and punctuation work that's easy right learn all that stuff but otherwise this is just a constant every day we hope right a constant process of learning listening trying thinking trying again thinking again you know abandoning the storyline, abandoning this entire novel, coming back to it later on after a new idea suddenly hits you. Yeah. Waking up at four o'clock in the morning and writing or staying up till four o'clock in the morning writing. Whatever works for you. Because whatever worked for Hemingway worked for Hemingway. You're not Hemingway. I'm not Hemingway. You don't have to. We don't have to be him. We don't have to be Toni Morrison. We can admire other authors like that. I'm a big fan of Harlan Ellison. I don't want to be Harlan Ellison. There was actually a lot about the guy, Harlan Ellison, that I'm not, you know, ever going to try to emulate. But even as a kid, I, when I read his story, When I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, I was like, "This, how do you do that? How do you make someone at a far remove in time and space who you don't know feel that? And that was the beginning of me going, oh, that would be cool to kind of write stories to, I need to figure out how to do this. But not how to copy Harlan Ellison, how to be Harlan Ellison, how to live his life. That's his life. You got to find your own life. I found my life, you know, your writing life. You got to find your own. And from, that starts with just sort of calming down and understanding that there's no disaster at the end of this there really isn't that you're never going to perfect it you're never going to get to that state where i've cracked it and now all i have to do is just focus and be like an ai and don't think and just type that's crazy that's not creativity that's not art that's not human right what do you do with all this writing advice in the end whatever you want you know, do with it as you will. And if you start thinking, well, I can't do this thing that I think would be really cool right here in the story. Because in one of his blog posts, Phil said, ooh, don't do that. It's to hell with me. Do it anyway. Because that's not my book. That's not my story. That's not my writing. That's yours. Write your story in your voice get that help as much as you can grab stuff out of the air and say like i think yeah maybe let's try that try that eh, no uh, this one Ooh, you know what if i just kind of 
take out the ends and do the middle part, that's perfect. You were on your journey. Hemingway was on his journey. Toni Morrison was on her journey. We're all on our own journey. Stay on your journey. But make it a journey of discovery. And that's, you discover by trying, by writing. And that's what all this really is, right? Read, think, write, read, think, write, read, think, write. Learn, 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 practice, 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 write, 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 forever and ever and ever. And while that writing advice out there in the cloud changes, try this, try that, try the other thing. But calm down. Absorb what advice makes any kind of sense to you at all. Think about it. Try it. Get specific feedback. Try some more. And just keep doing that over and over again for the rest of your life. Because you're not trying to find Stephen King's audience. He's got his audience. You're not trying to find Sarah J. Moss's audience. She's got her audience. You're trying to find your audience. And the only way to get your audience is by writing your book. Not Stephen King's book, not Sarah J. Moss's book, not R.F. Quang's book, not whoever's book. Your book. Okay, everybody? I think I'm just going to leave it at that. Good luck out there. <laughs>